Hey everyone, welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, The Art of Passive Income. This is the Roundtable Edition, and we, we have a very fun topic for you guys today. Mark is off today, so uh, it's, just, it's just the six of us. We got Mimi Schmidt. We got Eric yep. Peterson. Scott Bossman's on the phone. Bearland Aaron, and of course, Tate Litchfield, and me, Scott Todd. So, we're going to jump right into today's topic. Today's topic is something that I think what might be pretty unique for us land investors, maybe other, other real estate investors too, or heck, maybe people outside of even you know, what we do. But I was dealing with a problem yesterday. Yesterday, I had a very leisure day. It's a Monday. Yesterday was a Monday. Very leisure day. I'll tell you about my day later on in the podcast after we've gone around everybody else, but it was very leisure. I felt guilty. I, I had like survivor's guilt. And I literally got on the, on the uh, phone, I started boxing Mark like, Mark, do I, am I missing something here? I feel guilty, I, I, this can't be, you know, like, like, like I feel guilty, shouldn't I be out there like slaving away? And then he reassured me with what his day looked like and so we thought we would just randomly, which was really good, by the way, and we thought we would just randomly pull the group and see what did your yesterday look like. So, and wait, so three questions. What did your yesterday look like? Have you experienced survivor's guilt? And if so, what do you do just to move on? Like, don't you feel like you should be working harder? Mimi, you're up first. Go ahead. I always feel like, yes, there's more that I can do. So Mondays, my husband and I, since he works late on Sundays flying, we could have a breakfast date. So we go to this cool coffee bar and we both sit in the sunshine and get, you know, fancy lattes and work on, uh, he works on his stuff. I work on my business. I love it. And then like, I come home and I start knocking out business stuff. But when I was working, I'd take a break and I'd go get, you know, coffee or something and someone would hit me up for a raise or tell me they're not getting along with someone. Or, you know what I mean? I'd have to deal with all these, uh, these other things. Whereas now if I take a break, I go like putz around with my flowers and pick the dead ones off. I water them. I look at how pretty they are. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And it's in my house. I like out on my porch with my feet kicked up, working on my land business. So. Yes, I always feel like even if I have a leisurely day, I can sit there and be working on my laptop. So I still deal with it, but it's much more enjoyable, enjoyable than what it used to be. I mean, that, that is a valid point. You know, like you, you could, like if you ever got away in your corporate gig, like if you ever got away, man, all of a sudden, like you, there was, there was, you were going to pay the price, right? Like you'd come oh, yeah. back with like a boatload of emails or whatever. Yep. And now it's just like, like maybe like, let me just go pick the flowers. Let me go weed the garden out. Like, Oh, let me go think. Let me just think for the day. It's amazing. That's a, that's a cool, that's a cool Monday tradition though that you guys have too. like yeah. coffee, you know, breakfast together. That That's really, really cool. We cool. couldn't fit it in before. Right. And now it's, it's really nice. We still get to work, but it's in a really nice location and we can catch up. Awesome. All right. Eric, what what does Monday look like? At least yesterday's Monday, and survivors guilt. And do, do you ever feel like ah, I should be working harder than this? Okay, <clears throat> so yesterday was pretty typical day. I I took my youngest to camp. Uh, he's going to art camp this week, so I spent uh, the morning driving him over there. Had a couple errands to run after that. Um, Got back home a little bit later before lunch and um, spent a couple hours just catching up on some things, but then took a slow lunch, um, made myself a nice little lettuce wrap thing and um, <laughs> took, uh, took, a, took a longer lunch. I sat on the porch, enjoyed the weather, um, and then came back to work for a little while in the afternoon, but uh, all in all, it was a pretty slow day for me. Um, I am in the middle of hiring some additional VAs right now. So I did um, focus on that most of yesterday um, in the times that I did work. Um, in terms of survivor's guilt, um, you know, I think for me, it most comes out when I see 
other peers around me that are like working a nine to five or they're like, Hey, I, I can't, I can't make it to that game or could you come get my kids and bring, you know, them to the game or whatever, because they're working. And that's when it really hits me. I mean, I don't, I don't really think about it otherwise, you know, I'm home and I'm just kind of doing my thing, but it's when I'm interacting with others that, that don't have the freedom that I have that I start to realize like, man, this is, this is pretty special. And um, yeah, it can, it can definitely make you feel like, well, maybe I shouldn't be able to do that. You know, maybe I, maybe I need to be locked up in the office working away. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's really cool. Like, you know, like uh, when, when you can help out other, other parents or they're like, man, Oh, wow. Maybe Eric can take our kids to, to wherever, to the game or whatever, because we can't make it. But Eric does something like shady that he doesn't even work or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. They might All wonder right. that. Bearland Aaron, Survivor's Guild, and what did yesterday look like? Well, first thing I did yesterday was I went on a motorcycle ride and looked for a cheesecake factory. And, oh, I thought uh, you, were say you went on an, uh, like an Amish horse and buggy ride. Yeah, no. <laughs> he had to go a long um, ways to find a cheesecake factory. So he, well, had he to never found it, I don't think. Yeah, I didn't find one. We don't have one. So, um, no, honestly, um, I did ride, but um, I helped my son, you know, kind of start his, you know, working on starting his business. Um, so I helped you know, helped him do some things. Um, I've been working on uh, some WordPress stuff lately. So, you know, I came back and did that. But um, as far as Survivor's Guild, I don't know. See, I still push a lot of the business myself. So I don't have the, uh, you know, there. there's not this, it's all completely automated or handed off yet so that I have these big blocks of time where there's nothing to do. But I can tell you that I do have the freedom to, you know, schedule my day in a way that, you know, I want to, um, I, I help with our kids band a lot. Um, you know, building props and with a couple other parents that have some more flexible schedules and stuff. And, you know, and that is nice. I don't feel guilty about it though, because, you know, I guess I still do quite a bit as far as my business goes, but you know, I'll get there and I probably still won't feel guilty. <laughs> I would say that, I would say that uh, one of the things though is like the, the mere fact that you can like stop working when you want and go, go help your son or the mere fact that you can stop and, and go on a ride, you know, that, that's something that you could not do in really any, like to me, any other business, right? Like, cause go look at anybody that, that, has a business of their own, right? Like, you know, the, the sandwich shop owner or the, the, um, you know, the, the, the place where I go get my postage, like my, my local mailbox, uh, the, uh, going postal, I think is what it's called. You know, like when you look at, look at these owners, they're there, right? They're there working 50, 60 hours a week. And, you know, I had even talked about like, like last week, the, the story of like these entrepreneurs at that sem uh, seminar that I went to, but the entrepreneurs are, are slaving away 70, 80 hours. They're in tears. They're, 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 they're crying. They're not going on a motorcycle ride. They're not picking the, the, the plants like Mimi, getting the weeds out of their, bit, out of their, uh, their garden. They're slaving. They're like, they have another full-time job. And I think that that's really kind of cool and encouraging to hear your side of it too, because you may not experience that survivor skill, but you know what is that you benefit from kind of the business that you're creating, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Scott Bossman. I mean, what are you going to do, man? Mike, Mark's not even here. Like, it, it, it's just me. It's just me. You, you don't have the bro fest that you normally have. It's just, oh, Scott's here. I know. I'm not feeling the love as much as normal. <laughs> so, <sad. It's> okay. <laughs> All right. So yesterday, uh, yesterday was pretty low key for me. Um, since I've been home, I've been home now for about six months, I think. Uh, a busy morning for me is, uh, when I feel like I have to focus, I have to leave the house. So I'll go to Panera and I'll camp out for two or three hours and get a lot of work done on a, on a, on a lazy day. Like yesterday, 
I, my new routine is exactly like Mimi. I sit on my deck every morning and I have an iced coffee with my feet up on, <laughs> on the other lounge chair and my dog sit next to me. And it's the most amazing feeling in the world. Like, because, because I don't know, I mean, I was in healthcare and half the time I used to work in a nursing home and I don't know if you guys can appreciate or know how absolutely chaotic it is in one of these settings because you go in at 7.30 in the morning, you leave five in the afternoon, you don't sit down all day, you don't get time to eat, uh, you're, you're constantly doing something. And I was in a role where I was speaking not only with patients, but family members and nursing and doctors. And I mean, it just, it was insane how stressful it was. So now to be able to sit there on a Monday afternoon on my deck and sip coffee and work a little bit on my computer and wait for a, wait for a wire to come in yesterday morning for a cash sale. I'm like, this is insane. Uh, and then, you know, I definitely feel survivor's guilt when I mostly feel it uh, is when uh, I go in to cover um, I, I go and I still work just a couple hours a week whenever they need me. If somebody needs uh, to be evaluated at the nursing home, uh, I'll go in, but it, it's, it's like an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. So I kind of walk in all sheepish and I leave all sheepish because, uh, you know, I'm joining people who are working really hard and then I'm leaving an hour later, leaving them working really hard. <laughs> so I've seen some of your posts on Facebook of your view in the morning. And it's beautiful. I don't know if you if it was from your house or from a vacation spot, but there was snow and it was absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it's uh, I've taken a couple of them lately, so I'm not sure where that one was. But yeah, we have a beautiful backyard and it's it's amazing. Definitely uh, blessed. Yeah, it's uh, it's rough when when you like have to go to Panera Bread you know, to get away and work. And then you, you go to the cheesecake factory for lunch. I know it. It's okay. All right. I, I think that we have made what, like, I'm going to guess we've probably made what, like 10 or 12 podcasts in a row where we've mentioned the cheesecake factory. It's got to be like the longest stretch ever. And like cheesecake factory, my- anybody from that company is listening. Show us some love. Like wants to go there. I deserve a kickback for all the hazing I've endured. Yeah, right? You know, it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, I'll just go there before the morning rush, right, when it's not loud, and I'll enjoy a meal. No problem, yeah, cheesecake. Go, man. My way. Hey, I don't get any kickbacks from the Amish community. <laughs> There's no kickbacks to be had there, buddy. <laughs> all, right, all right, T. I, I can only imagine <laughs> what a Monday looks like for you, but – all right, let's go with yesterday. What did yesterday look like? And come on, man. I, I, I know you've got to have some serious survivor skill because all your buddies, your age, they're all like, oh, my God, I got to work so hard to get ahead. Oh, my God, I got to get a wet raise. And Tate's like, hold my beer. But it's <laughs> hold my Coke. Here. So tell us today. Tell us about yesterday. Well, I, I think, Scott, you got to back it up, right? These because it's not like my weekend started on Saturday, right? I mean, I was up in uh, Idaho and I fished the salmon fly hatch prior to this. I came home uh, and I was, you know, set to work tomorrow, yesterday, I guess it was. So my Monday morning, I actually was busy yesterday. I had a lot of stuff going. I woke up early. I rode my bike out to the Hoover Dam with uh, two buddies, came home. Um, met, uh, my wife, we went for brunch with the baby, came home, put her down for a nap. I had a coaching call. Uh, so I got to work with a good buddy of mine who's just surprised me and told me that he's, uh, just about two, he's about one sale away from hitting $8,000 a month, passive income in nine months. So that was really exciting. In the afternoon, I hung out. Uh, I grilled some meats, so started something on the smoker and watched that for a few hours. And that evening I went and I, uh, I actually fed the homeless. So that's, that's what I did yesterday. So one hour. Wow. Like, you hate me? Wow. I mean, you, you had to go with like, I fed the homeless. At well, the that, end. I mean, that's why when you said like, <laughs> What did, what did your Monday look like? I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to have a drop the mic moment here because it doesn't matter how lazy the rest of you were. I did something good for the world. 
Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, right. Like now, now I'm feeling good following it. Like, so Scott, tell us about your day. How was the boat? You know, like <laughs> uh, party again. What were you doing yesterday, Scott? Uh, well, mine really doesn't matter at this point. You know, like, uh, <laughs> we'll just drop off at yours, man. Like I should have known and like left you like to the end. I don't know. Like mine sounds very self-serving at this point. But Scott, you can't have, I mean, I, I know you said I probably deal with survivor's guilt. The main time I deal with survivor's guilt is a lot of times in, in Nevada when I'm riding, we have these amazing bike paths and they go over the freeways. And in the mornings, I'll ride over the top of the freeways and I'll just see the traffic bumper to bumper to bumper for as far as the eye can see. That's when I have survivor's guilt because I think to myself, man, those poor people are just you know, sucking on an exhaust pipe for an hour each morning. That's, that's terrible. Like I'm out here in the sun, enjoying some fresh air, getting my exercise in, playing with my buddies. And, you know, that's, that's when I really start to count my blessings and go, you know what, this truly is the only life for me. I'm, I'm a hundred percent unemployable now. Like I am broken. I can't, I can't work for somebody. Oh, I'd be the worst employee. All right. So here, here's, here's my Monday, man. Like here it is. So yeah, what, what spawned all of this was basically I had a very leisure Monday morning. Like, I don't know. I didn't even look at my email yesterday. Like, I don't think I looked at email at all yesterday, like at all. And I'm sitting there and, um, I'm, I'm been reading a book. So yesterday I ran some errands in the morning, had lunch with my wife, came back and, um, basically sat, sat by the pool, just sat by the pool and read a book, like literally just sat there and had no desire, no interest to even look at my email at all. Just like, I didn't know what was going on in the world. Didn't know anything about like no news was on. Like, I don't know what happened yesterday. It's just like, I lived in my own little cocoon yesterday. And it was about, um, it must've been around like three 30 when I started feeling guilty. Like, man, um, like I didn't work today and, uh, I've got, I've got a busy week with my, some family stuff this week and, and I'm, I'm probably not going to do much work at all this week. And then next week we're going on a week long vacation. So I'm, I'm thinking like, man, I'm not going to like really be around to do much for the next two weeks. It's like, I'm going to be around. I'm going to be able to look at it at the email if I wanted to or whatever, but I have no desire, like no desire. And then you look at the numbers and it's like the money still came in the door. Like everybody's surviving. And I, that's when I boxed Mark around three 30 and I'm like, Mark, I, I feel guilty, man. Like I'm not working. I, I feel like a bum, right? Like I feel like, I feel like I'm not being productive, all of these things. And then uh, about two hours later, he, he boxed me and said, don't worry about it. I had the greatest day. I had a two hour lunch with my wife. It's fantastic. I'm going to go home. I'm going to go swimming now because it's too hot. I'm going to swim. I might take a nap. And this is all, all being driven from obviously the passive income, right? When, when you have that passive income that we're able to create, all of a sudden you're able to go back and like create the lifestyle that you want. And today I had a, a kind of another weird experience about this because like whenever people see me like, or ask me like, Hey, so what do you do now? Or what do you do? I don't really know what to tell them, right? Like I, I tell them I'm a real estate investor and, but like, how do you tell somebody that you make your living selling dirt and that people literally like keep sending you paychecks. Doesn't that feel weird? Mimi, do, do you feel weird when people ask you like, Oh, what do you do now? Like, yeah, they don't really believe it. They don't really get it. Yeah. Like, Oh, I'm a land investor. What? Well, how does that work? You can cash flow this stuff. I mean, is that not a weird conversation, Mimi? Can I tell I, I love this. When I first set up my LLC with my bank, I went in and I talked with folks. <laughs> Got it all set up. I tried to get a $15,000 loan. Couldn't get any money to start my business, right? So now it's been a couple years. I go in there every week or every other week to either get a cashier's check or to, for a cash sale to sign the deed over. And I've been talking with the notaries and the bank manager. The bank manager will come out now and find me when I walk in. 
And he can't believe, because I'll tell him, oh, you won't believe, I bought this one for this much, I sold it for this one in a day, I double closed, I, I, I'm, I'm getting the money before I'm even paying for it. And he wants to become a Langy, the manager of my bank, he's like, you have to send me the information. Because over the years, I've sold him, and he's like, you know, we have great rates on, on uh, business loans now, like, I don't need it, thanks though. Yeah. Well, it's funny, Mimi, I had that same conversation with my wife just today. I said, you know what? It's the weirdest thing. Like back in the day when I was starting off, like I ran out of money. I bought all this land and I like ran out of money. I went to the bank and I'm like, hey, look, here's what I got. I, 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 I like showed them everything I have. And I'm like, can't I get some loan from all this stuff to keep it rolling? And they're like, well, you know, you could do a home equity loan or whatever. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I want it on the business. I don't want to take it out of my equity in my house. And like, no, 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 you can't, you can't do it. Well, like today, like you said, today I don't need the loan. I don't need the money. And it's the nuttiest thing because the, like you walk in and every time I'm there, they're like, you know, typically I'm like, Hey, here's another deposit or I need to open up another company, LLC, whatever, and all this other stuff that they know me. I walk in and they're like, well, what, what can we do for you today? And they always ask me, like, can we have the commercial banker call you? And I'm like, no, I don't need your money. And they're like, what? Good and then today, today, like I went to go and I'm like buying something and they're like, would you like to finance this? And I'm like, no, not really. And they're like, why? And I'm like, why pay interest? I can pay cash. What's the problem? And they're like, <laughs> well, it's kind of cheap at low money. And I'm like, I don't need it. I'm good. Here, let's keep rolling. And I'm telling my wife, like, I can't even fathom to even understand, like, they can't under, they, they see the world, like I see the world differently than they see it now. And that's a really cool thing. So I, it's funny that you brought that up. Yeah, you're Eric? going to be meeting my branch, my bank manager at one of the boot camps soon, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, what do you tell people? Like, what do you do? Yeah, I don't like that question because I never know how to answer it. You know, I mean, you say you're a real estate investor and then they're thinking, all right, you know, what, you own some apartments or, you know, a single family home you're renting out or, or what is it, you know, and it, it just turns into like a longer conversation than a lot of times you want to have. Um, but when I do take the time to actually explain it, people are always just kind of blown away by it. And they're, they're like, that is really cool. Sounds exciting. And often, you know, they want to know more about it, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's one of those questions I, I don't enjoy too much. <laughs> that is, it is, it's, it's, it sounds nutty because they don't understand it. They think it's weird. I don't know. Bearland, may, maybe your maybe the, maybe your neighbors, they all get it, but maybe not. What, what do you say? No, it's, I kind of have that same feeling as Eric, but usually when I get the question, um, you know, I tell them, I'm a real estate investor. I buy and sell raw land. It's kind of like flipping houses only with just land. And then they give me that blank stare and that's about it. So I'm like, Hey, it was nice talk to you. <laughs> it's fun Cause it's like, what, what? It's crazy. Scott, what, what, what happens over there? What happens over here? Uh, same thing. I, I, I try to keep it brief. Oh, I just, I, I work, uh, I work at home uh, with some real estate investing. And if they, if they press the issue, I'll tell them a little bit more about it. But uh, it, it's funny the reaction you get every once in a while. Uh, I saw a, an old coworker a few weeks ago who I hadn't worked with in about four or five years. And I'll see her occasionally, but, um, <clears throat> but she's like, so where are you now? Where are you practicing? And I said, well, I actually hung up the, hung up the PT, uh, the work. Uh, I, I still work you know, a couple afternoons a week for an hour or two. She's like, what? I said, yeah, I, I, I'm in real estate investing now. What kind? Well, you're going to think it sounds funny, but I buy and sell raw land. She's like, what? She completely, completely off guard. Uh, because I, you know, at that time when I knew her, I don't think that she would uh, conceive the possibility of me doing that. Yeah, I'm telling you, like, it's, it's so crazy. And then the, the thing is, it's like, People never even think about land. It's, it, it's the nuttiest thing because it's right there in front of them. We walk on the earth. It's beneath our feet all the time. 
it's like you, you ever heard like something so simple, like uh, you know, it's the simplest things are the are the best things. You can't get any simpler than land. It's it's crazy. Hey, when when new people when you meet someone and they're like, hey, what do you do? What do you what do you tell them? Like you know, like uh, I'm independently wealthy. I don't know. Like like I used to I used to when I when I bought my house, I uh, my neighbors were all really curious about me, and I used to just tell them I'm an import and export. Right. And, and they looked at me like, what is, what does that mean? I was like, uh, you know, shipping. And they looked at me like, yeah, this guy is, this guy's lost it. Who just moved in next door. Yeah. And now, now when people ask me, my wife doesn't like it when I allude to the fact that I've got a shady career choice. Um, so I just tell them I'm, I'm in real estate and, um, you know, people always pry and it's like, ah, it's pretty, you know, it's not exciting. You wouldn't probably like it, but it has to do with, you know, vacant land in the middle of the, uh, in the middle of the desert. And they look at me like, all right, next in line. Who can <laughs> next? I mean, like even my in-laws, I'm not sure they, they fully understand <laughs> what I do for, for work. I mean, first of all, I don't think I work and that's, uh, probably not earning me any brownie points, but, uh, but you know, I mean, it's a, it's a funny question to ask because I, I do, you know, have a lot of friends uh, that are very curious about what I'm doing and why I'm home and available to do anything they want to do at any given day or time of the week. And, you know, they're definitely curious, but it's a, it's a niche market and the competition is honestly non-existent. Nobody's ever met another land investor. Right. I mean, before this, had you ever spoken to anyone in your whole life, Scott, that was in raw land? No, it's it's no. the it's the nuttiest thing, man. It really is. It, it, so when you tell somebody, it's like the chances of you meeting like a rocket scientist are probably greater than meeting a, uh, a land investor. So it, it just goes to show you <laughs> how small the competition market is. I mean, there isn't. I'm not, I'm not worried about other people. That's why we do these podcasts, right? Like the more the merrier, honestly. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a weird question when you get asked that, but uh, it's, it's good to pull people's legs and make them think that, uh, you know, you're, you, you do what you do and they could never understand it because the reality is they don't, they have no idea that this marketplace even exists. So. Uh, you, you can always tell, tell them that you created the iPod. Yeah. Created- yeah, that's true. I was mean, a, there was an Adam Sandler movie where, uh, where that, that was the line. I, I created the iPod. Oh, really? He's like, yeah, yeah, I created the iPod. And then everybody just kind of drops it. Like, oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Sounds great. Yeah. It's all good. I, I do tell oh. people like, oh, I'm on a weekly podcast. I tell people yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a weekly podcast, like, I don't know. We're talking they, about the they, like that. they get that, and there's a wow factor. Yes, I'm a professional podcaster. They yeah. come to my house, and they see, you see the cool, funky light. Like, oh, wow, you really are. That's so cool. I had a friend come over, and he, like, came into uh, the Garage Mahal, and he saw, like, my, my podcast mic and, like, the computer and like, everything set up, and he's like, whoa, what, what's going on here? And I was like, oh, you know, I'm on a podcast every week. And he was like, oh. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's what you do. You're a podcaster. I'm like, it's one of the many hats I wear. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny that you bring that up because, uh, like, I've got, you know, like I, I always joke, I got a TV studio here, right? Like, I've got high end cameras, lights, microphones, all this other stuff. And when, when, like, especially at night when I'm doing flight school, and the lights are bright and it's all on sometimes i'll go outside and look up and you just see these big white soft boxes up there because the blinds are open and i'm thinking like anybody walking by must think like man is that guy on like fox news cnn cbs what network is that guy on you know and i'm like yeah yeah don't worry about it don't worry about it we're on the land geek network they probably think you got some sort of illegal grow operation up there (laughs) with the lights (laughs) It's wow. like glaring. It's like the, the second sun of the earth coming out of Scott's upstairs. Yeah, I'll have to take a picture one night and like put it, I'll put it out there. Maybe, maybe I can do it tonight. Like put it out there. Just what the neighbors That's what could do for the rest of the day. That's, That's what you could do. I could get that set up. That's right. That's yeah, that could be your afternoon. Yeah, but I don't need to do anything. With it. It's already set up. Yeah. 
Well, you can uh, plan for it. So this week, Mimi has a tip of the week. Mimi, what do you have? Okay, this is the coolest thing. So I bought a couple of properties lately and people go out on the weekends and I'm so excited they're going to visit my property and they'll call me and they'll say, I can't even imagine how you build on this slope. And I'm like, slope? Oh my goodness, right? So I can go look at the elevation, but I found this a website. It's called Top of View by the uh, US uh, Geospatial Survey. Okay, so when you click the link, bring your cursor down and click there somewhere. I just used Costia. It'll show you all the maps that it's got from like 1880 up to the present, okay? And if you click on the word show, I don't know if you can, it'll put like the old map. Like right now I've got a map from 1954. And you can move this transparency bar up and down or back and forth. And you can see how it's changed over time. Like Sanchez Reservoir is like six times as big as it used to be. There used to be a railroad track through there. So I think it's the coolest thing. And all you have to do to download the picture, you can just press this JPEG arrow, KMZ, GeoTIFF, or PDF. It even tells you how big before you do it. So you just press that. Or you can, of course, you know, click it where your property is and then do a um, screen grab, you know. But I think it's so cool. Wow, that is really cool. All the way back to 1880, you can go potentially yeah. all the way back so to 1880. Like, yeah, it'll show you the list of all the maps that it's got. So some of these street names I haven't been able to figure out, and I got them out of here. So it's a cool little wow. geospatial tool. And look at that. I mean, like I went back and looked this one area I was looking at. I, was, I went to 1954, and when you compare it to 2016, there's actually weird changes in the elevation too. Like it's you can funny. See that elevation of the ground is changing too yeah when you run it back and forth so and it's got a lot of things listed in it that i didn't know were there so always useful to learn about the area wow I think that's cool. really cool mimi i just bookmarked this this is that's cool actually that cool. that's really sweet oh so, you know if you can always use it to enhance the pictures that you've got for the property since we don't get out there to actually see them. Which is another funny story. <laughs> yes, I completely it. agree. They're like, you buy it and you've never seen it? <laughs> All right. Well, I thought it was a good uh, round table. Glad you guys could make it. Glad for you guys that you listened to it. Hope we found it entertaining. Please leave us a review, rate it, subscribe, share it with a friend, get the word out. Look, we cannot keep continuing to get the good talent that's on this call without your love. So let us know, hit us up, review. We read them. I, you, we don't even talk about that, but we do read them. Uh, you know, put it out there. Let us know how we're doing. Tell us how we can get better and uh, listen to the next one. All right, guys, ready to do this? One, two, Three, let, let three ring. 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 Jeez, Aaron actually did it. No. Oh, you didn't? I thought I heard you. No. no. Oh wow, that's what was up then. I think we were trying to go slow for you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what are you guys doing the rest of the day? Nothing. That's I, it. Uh, <laughs> it's done. I'm, I'm going to go mow the lawn. I'm revamping our website. All right, real fast. Tate, are you done or still working today? I'm done. I'm going to go get some Froyo. All right. So for you, it's lunchtime Froyo. Uh, Bossman, what are you doing? Mowing the lawn right now at 2.45 in the afternoon, which none of my neighbors can do. And then I have uh, two baseball games tonight for my boys. Well, it's uh, three three forty three here. I was getting ready to go like uh, go see the the mess that the pool guys made when they uh, mowed the lawn and threw all this all the debris into the pool. But it's raining, so I'm gonna have to wait a little bit. Uh, Bearland, what are you doing? Working on your website? Working on website. Gonna go run first, I think. Then I'll probably help help my son with some stuff at his work to uh, get him set up for the next week. Are you, are you taking the WordPress class on InvestorNinjas.com? I just finished it. And? It was excellent. Excellent. There was, yeah, I got to say, because 
um, WordPress, you know, updated to this Gutenberg. And I had been kind of procrastinating on fixing some website issues because I thought, well, it's something else I have to learn. You know, it's going to take time. And then this class showed up on the Investor Ninja's site. And I'm like, oh, that's perfect. I went through it. And now I've got a great understanding of all the things I need to do. It was, uh, it was perfect. And you know what's really cool about that? Is that they're going to keep it updated. So any changes, they take care of it. That's cool, right? You'll, you'll always be able to go back and get the most latest update. Nice. All right, Mimi, you going to go pick some flowers, some weeds, or what? What are you doing? We have, do we have a coach's call? I think we have a coach's call. I got to finish an offer on a 10 property deal. I got to set up the payment uh, for my sale from this weekend, and then I'm done. Nice. Eric, what you got? I'm going to review some applicants on Upwork, right. and that's about it. That's fun. It's me. We're going to punch out now. So appreciate you guys joining, <laughs> and uh, we'll see everybody next week.